Shark Tank is the most popular business slash venture capital show in the world. I mean, what's more motivating than watching aspiring entrepreneurs try to pitch their ideas and take their companies to the next level? But while Shark Tank is no doubt entertaining, that's all it should be used for, entertainment. You think like uh, you can get me 1.3 million for educating yeah. these, these bobos up here for the yeah, last five so years? Shark Tank is a terrible representation when it comes to what goes down in a real VC pitch. So much of what we see is completely staged and just for the camera. Not to mention, the producers like to warp what really happens to make it more entertaining for us viewers. For example, an entrepreneur may only stumble once in an hour-long pitch. But given that these pitches are condensed into just 10 to 15 minutes, it seems like their entire pitch was a train wreck. Not to mention, the business advice that the sharks give is often hit or miss. Now, don't get me wrong here. Shark Tank is a phenomenal show and I've been a fan for several years. But we need to be able to separate between entertainment and real entrepreneurship because Shark Tank is not that great when it comes to the latter. Starting off with the biggest issue, no one on Shark Tank is actually there to make a deal. You see, with the real VCs, the only reason anyone is there is to make a deal. Investors want to invest their money to make returns, while entrepreneurs need an investment to grow their business. But on Shark Tank, the only reason anyone is there is for publicity. If an entrepreneur is there only to make a deal, then they're just naive. Most of them know that the second that their episode airs, their business is gonna blow up. This is one of the reasons that Shark Tank businesses have such a high success rate. In fact, only 6% of Shark Tank businesses have gone out of business. Once they get some momentum from Shark Tank, they're able to achieve the economies of scale that they need to turn their startup into a legitimate company. But what this also means is that getting an investment from the sharks themselves is not the main reason they're there. The real benefit of pitching on the tank is not convincing the sharks, but convincing you, the viewer. So really, it's just one big infomercial. Meanwhile, from the sharks' perspective, they have no monetary reason to make deals either. The primary reason the sharks are there is to promote their own personal brand image. I mean, just think about this. How much money could the sharks even make from these deals in the first place? Take Mark Cuban for example. His median investment size is $125,000 and his median stake is 20%. Virtually none of the deals that he makes have any chance of reaching the billion dollar mark. More times than not, these are small niche businesses that would be lucky to reach the $10 million mark. Maybe the strongest out of them could reach $100 million. From the entrepreneur's perspective, this is awesome. If you own a $100 million business or even a $10 million business, you're probably set for life. But how much does this matter for Mark? A 20% stake in a $10 million business is only $2 million. With a net worth of $5.83 billion, this increases his net worth by a whopping 0.03%. Even if we're talking about a $100 million cash out, that's only $20 million for Mark or a 0.3% increase in net worth. And that's if his stake doesn't get watered down by new investors. Now of course, the other sharks aren't as rich as Mark Cuban, but even for them, they'd be lucky to grow their net worth by 10% through all the investments they ever make on Shark Tank. The same, however, cannot be said about the publicity they receive. How many more people will recognize the Mavericks because they see Mark Cuban on TV every week? How many more people will watch QVC because they saw Lori on Shark Tank? And how many people didn't even know about FUBU until they saw Damon on Shark Tank? This is where the real money is for the sharks. Take the Mavericks for example. Until Shark Tank started gaining traction, they were worth about $400 million. But over the last 10 years, they've grown all the way to $2.7 billion, which is a $2.3 billion profit for Cuban. Now, you could argue that this gain in valuation is due to the team itself becoming better. But to that, I would argue that the main reason the team became better was because of all the publicity Mark got the team. As the Mavericks became more recognizable, they became a more desirable team to play for which of course attracts better talent. This same argument could be made for the brand values of FUBU and the Herjavec group as well. Clearly, for both the sharks and the entrepreneurs, the money is not in the deal, it's in the publicity. So how could such a show possibly set realistic expectations regarding venture capital for aspiring entrepreneurs? Given that much of the show is just one big publicity stunt, 
I don't think you'd be surprised here that a significant portion of the deal that are made on air never make it to the other side. In fact, with most sharks, the odds of the deal actually being completed are basically just a coin flip. The only shark that has a high completion rate is Mark who comes in at 87.5%. And honestly, this is likely a strategic play by Mark as well. The investments that he makes are not consequential to his wealth. So being a man of his word is more important than potentially making a bad investment. The average viewer will likely never see these stats, but I'm sure the people who actually make pitches are well aware of them. When they see that Mark has a far higher closing rate than the other sharks, they'll likely be motivated to get a deal with Mark. On TV, this will come off as entrepreneurs consistently choosing Mark over everyone else, which is again great for the brand image. Now, choosing to not complete a deal because the fundamentals of a startup don't match up is completely fine and perfectly understandable. The problem, however, is that the downsides of business are rarely shown on the show. The overwhelming majority of the show has to do with showing off this idealistic vision of success. We see sharks shaking hands in these big corporate rooms in front of these giant mansions. But this is not what happens in real life even for rich business people like the sharks. Most of these guys are actually pretty low-key and live pretty modest lives. But this doesn't align with the producer's vision, so they just make stuff up. A perfect example of this is with Chris Saka. Chris is literally what this show is supposed to be about. Venture capitalists and startups that make it big. Chris was an early investor in Uber and this made him a billionaire. So you would think that he fits this mold perfectly. But his real life wasn't nearly exciting enough for the show. First, the producers asked to film at his house, but when they realized he lived in a three-bedroom house in Truckee, California, they were quick to back out. Next, they asked to film in front of his private jet, but Chris doesn't actually own a private jet. While he does fly private, he finds that it's far more economical to simply rent a jet when he needs one. Hearing this, they wanted to shoot in front of his supercars and boats, but the most expensive car that Chris owns is a Tesla and he doesn't own a boat. Running out of options, they asked to film at his HQ, but his VC firm doesn't have a fancy HQ either. In fact, he does most of his deals from his home to spend more time with his family. According to Chris, the producers quote, didn't know how to make me look rich to America, and they told him that he has to overcompensate for a shirt. And eventually, they decided to just fake the look. They filmed in a random conference room of one of the companies that Chris owns, and they staged some sort of billionaire wine celebration in someone's patio. When you're struggling to portray a real VC billionaire to the public, there's no question that there's something wrong with how you're trying to portray them. Instead of giving us a real look into the lives of the sharks and the entrepreneurs, more times than not, we're just shown success porn. Aside from ulterior motives and the misleading visions of success, what goes on in the tank is also not something to learn from. First of all, the vast majority of businesses that come onto Shark Tank are product-oriented businesses. This isn't by random chance. The producers specifically choose products that viewers can relate to. Also, the businesses that generally want to be on Shark Tank are companies that can benefit from public exposure. If your business provides back-end support for Walmart, this wouldn't be all that fun for viewers to watch. The problem, however, is that most successful startups are exactly this. When was the last time you heard about a clothing or food startup that makes it to a billion dollars? Almost all unicorns have to do with tech, yet we rarely see this on the show. If you're a real entrepreneur, you would have a much better shot at making it if you try to fulfill some niche role in tech than trying to start any of the businesses on the show. Also, if you do start a business and are trying to raise money, you shouldn't take inspiration from Shark Tank's valuations because more times than not, they're ripoffs. I'm sure we're all familiar with those entrepreneurs that offer like 5% of their company for half a million dollars. This is a terrible idea in the tank because the sharks are gonna rip you apart. But in the real VC world, this is extremely common. Most of the businesses that we see on Shark Tank are in what you would call Series A funding. Series A is usually the first time entrepreneurs ask VCs to invest. Until this point, the startup is usually funded by the entrepreneurs and their friends and family. And the average valuation of Series A funding isn't half a million or one million like we see on Shark Tank. The average valuation is $22 million and the average raised is $13 million. Even seed funding rounds which comes before Series A have higher valuations than what we see on Shark Tank. The average seed valuation as of 2018 was nearly $6 million and these businesses generally have zero revenue. 
So to see businesses with six figures, if not seven figures in sales get lower valuations on Shark Tank is quite comical. The only reason the sharks are able to demand such high valuations is because they're essentially celebrity endorsers. If you're simply looking for money, you'll be able to find far more reasonable valuations amongst real VC firms. Not to mention, you almost certainly won't be ridiculed. VC investors aren't going to tell you that you're dead to them. If you come back to them in a later round of funding with more results, they may very well invest because all they care about is returns. They don't care about upholding some sort of TV persona. Something else to note is that you won't have 10 seconds to accept the deal either. Honestly, this is pretty ridiculous. Selling a portion of your company, especially at a lower valuation than you asked for, is a pretty big decision. But the sharks rarely give you time to think or talk about it. So if you're truly looking to raise money, don't take any inspiration from Shark Tank because you're just asking to be ripped off. In the end, I know this video has been quite critical about Shark Tank, but it's not all bad. For many, Shark Tank may be what motivates them to take their first step into entrepreneurship. And Shark Tank does teach people about the basic traits that investors look for and how to raise money. But Shark Tank shouldn't be taken any more seriously than this. Most of the entrepreneurs and sharks are there for publicity, not to make deals. Similarly, much of their show is built upon this fake vision of success instead of the real grind behind businesses. And most importantly, in terms of actually raising money, Shark Tank isn't all that great. Now of course, there are some exceptions. If you're a product-oriented business, want publicity, and would like a celebrity business person on your side, then Shark Tank could be an option for you. But for most entrepreneurs, tech and traditional VC firms are likely your best bets, and you shouldn't take Shark Tank as anything more than just entertainment. But that's just what I think. Do you think Shark Tank should offer a more realistic view into VC funding? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you're a fan of Shark Tank for entertainment. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.